Hey there, I'm the community manager for Pixlr. We're gonna show you a neat technique for what we like to call space silhouettes. I don't know if you've ever seen these types of photos, but they take advantage of the space overlays in Pixlr Express to create some really beautiful images. No one makes this kind of image better than Aldrin Gersalia. He's one of our favorite Pixlr people and he's a master at this technique. Aldrin is a school teacher located in the Philippines he participates a lot in the Pixlr on Flickr group, and he always looks like he's out doing something fun. We really love his creative spirit, and we're thrilled that he's going to show us how to make this thing that he makes so well. For this tutorial, we asked him to record his workflow. We're going to keep tabs on each step, so it'll be easy to follow along and make your own. He generally uses Pixlr Express for the web to make these images, which offers a bit more control, and of course a larger screen to do more detailed work than you might be able to do on your phone or tablet but this technique works the same no matter what device you're using. A photo of something in the foreground, like this water tower or a tree or a building with the sky in the back, that's perfect. To get started, Aldrin sharpens his image to clear up some of the fuzziness. It's even okay to over sharpen in situations like this if you're gonna be layering on a lot of effects. You want this to be a bold image so a little boldness in editing is warranted. Basically, edit your photo like you normally would but maybe a little bolder. Next, we're gonna add some background color and some texture. Aldrin applies the Dreamscape Bokeh Overlay. This is one of my favorite overlays because the colors are really pretty. Try out some of the other Bokeh Overlays or colorful effects to see which ones you like. But again, you're probably gonna to wanna to be bold. The color and texture you apply now will really work in conjunction with your space effect. So if you want your spacey look to be as intense as the Aurora Borealis, you're gonna to wanna to go big on the color. After adding some of that color, Aldrin paints out the water tower with the history brush. If you've never used the history brush, I strongly recommend getting to know it. I sometimes think of it as the undo brush. You can paint on any effect and then use the history brush to remove some of that effect you just laid down. If you make a mistake while you're doing this, just switch to the eraser, which is kind of like a redo. One paints off the effect, the other paints it back. Next, pick a space effect. There are a lot to choose from. Some are designed to work better with light images, some work better with dark images. Play around with a few to see how they look. In fact, this is a really great opportunity to try out the randomizer if you've never used it before. It just lets you cycle through the effects until you find one you really like. Aldrin chooses the Enif overlay, which is sort of a spiral galaxy with a big twinkling star. Notice how Aldrin rotates the overlay to position it so that it really works best with the photo. You can rotate or flip any overlay just like this. Again, Aldrin uses the history brush to paint out the effect he added. I think the real trick to this technique is making the background practically a Vincent Van Gogh illustration while keeping the subject or foreground of the photo as realistic looking as possible. This is a really smart technique that's so darn simple, but one you may not have even thought of. Double down on the space effects. Aldrin adds a second space overlay called Baham. Notice how he considers dialing down this effect to less than 100% but then changes his mind. You can start to see how much more rich and realistic this spacey sky is becoming by using two space overlays. Adding a second one both darkens the sky while adding more stars, which really helps the stars stand out. Again, Aldrin paints out the last effect he applied using the history brush. If you're happy with how it looks at this point, and it looks pretty great, you're done. But consider some additional details like Aldrin does here. He has one of the subtle effects called Ann, these subtle effects are great at adding really subtle coloring. See how Aldrin's constellations suddenly get this deeper, richer red hue? It's pretty subtle, but it makes a really big difference in this particular image. Finally, Aldrin adds some vignetting to the image. He chooses the ball vignette at about 75%. Vignetting is entirely optional. Some people love it, some people think it's overused. If you feel like it might make your photo too dark, just stick with what you have. And that's it. Aldrin saves his image and signs off from this video, which we'll be doing too. But not before thanking him for taking the time to show us how he makes these amazing images. Thank you, sir. Please keep making and sharing creative work just like this. If you've never tried this out, open up Pixlr Express in your browser and give it a shot. Check out our blog for written step-by-step -step instructions for this video. And give us a shout on Twitter, at Pixlr. If you make anything like this, we want to see it.